What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Many of us are very familiar with Tia Maori and Corey Hardrick. They have recently split up, and Tia Maori is... In my honest opinion, looking rather cringe on some of these videos she's posting, changing different outfits, trying to get attention, trying to look uh, sexy or even, you know, to pretend that her life is so much better without Corey. And it's it's falling on deaf ears. You see many people are roasting her up. And to be honest, it's quite comical um, to see what has transpired since the divorce. But Tia Maori just can't stop talking about Corey Hardrick. He wanted to stay married to her. She didn't. He left her alone. He left the whole situation alone. I mean, he, there are some court proceedings and things like that, but he doesn't really talk about her. And that's something that you notice about a lot of black men in the entertainment world. They get married to a black wife and the wife still takes these little digs at them. Our girlfriends. Look at Michael B. Jordan and Lori Harvey. She takes these little digs like with the license plate break, dump him and stuff like that. And Michael B. Jordan just has to eat it. Same thing with Devon Franklin. Megan Good and her little um, fans take these digs. He has to remain professional. And Corey Hardrick is the same way. She likes, you know, posts of people talking bad about him, saying things like that, you know, being very subliminal. He, he remains professional, but you notice this is what's happening with black men. Shout out to brother Jay Shine. And he mentioned this to me. So, you know, black men just can't respond in the social media world to what their ex-wives or ex-girlfriends have done. They're not allowed to clap back because as soon as they do, they're a misogynist. So this is what you see now. Corey Hardrick was dumped. Then here is Tia Maori blaming Corey Hardrick by comparing their marriage to her character on the TV show she used to be on called The Game. Now, some of you may have remembered that show. The Game uh, was basically Tia Maori. She played a student called Melanie Barnett, who was a medical student who gives up her chance to go to John Hopkins. She goes to San Diego to support her football playing boyfriend who was drafted to the fictional San Diego Sabres. All right. And she says, you know, this is very similar to what I did in my life. You know, uh, I met Corey Hardrick. I was well established and Corey didn't have a car. Like I, I was the one that was supporting him. Okay. And you know, he's even credited Maori for looking at past the circumstances and giving him a chance, right? So basically she's saying, you know what? You know, I did all this stuff for him. And 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 in, in other words, you know, I sacrificed my life for the guy. It's very similar because he didn't, it's another way of saying, you know, he didn't have anything before me. I put him on. In other words, one of the reasons why I can justify that divorce, because I got tired of, you know, helping his career and helping him out. Okay, fine. Fine, Tia. But there are two things you're leaving out here, if you want to compare that. Number one, that guy became somebody. It is very, very seldom that a man comes into a woman's life because we saw what Jesse Williams and Aaron Drake Lee, you know, Hey, as soon as he got on, he wasn't with her for that many years. He instantly dumped her. All right. Corey Hardrick may not have been anybody, but he became somebody and he still was wanting to be a husband. He didn't dump you for nobody that was younger. He didn't do that. He stayed loyal, right? And secondarily, what you are leaving out, and this is what a lot of sisters are leaving out when they want to take digs at black men or digs the men they deal with. Why is it that you only had the opportunity to deal with a man at in, in, in what was considered your prime? Why were you dealing with Corey Hardrick in the first place? See, that's indicative of something that we don't want to talk about. What is that indicative of, Tia? 
it's indicative that the opportunities that you said were available to you, or maybe you think they're available to you, were not. The reason why, no, no, no woman in the world, honestly, maybe very rarely, will have an opportunity with the high value man and say no to him. Which means that you had to go and get a fixer upper or draft a husband because the guys that were in the industry were either already taken or nobody really wanted to marry you. So you took a risk on this guy. So you're trying to blame him for the fact that he wasn't who you wanted him to be, but you're not mentioning the fact that you couldn't get what you wanted. And this is what I want you guys to realize. This is the scapegoat argument that many ladies use in the community. They use this time and time again. And, and, and what it's supposed to indicate is, you know, see there, there we are helping these black men do X, Y, and Z, and they can't amount to anything. So, okay, if that's the case, which is, which is fine. Here's what I want to know. Why are you dealing with them in the first place? Why are you dealing with them in the first place? And then when you, when you, when you, when you find that out, then you will say, well, you know, black men are in jail, black men are this or that. Okay, fine. We can, we can deal with that. No, no, no problem. Well, your sister got a white man. You, you can't tell me that you just love black men so much that you just would be against, against that. Right? So why didn't you get one? See, now we keep going down the rabbit hole in which we can't get around it. So since you're tired of dealing with Corey Hardrick, right? You don't want, you don't want him no more. Fine. He he's, he's dusty as hell. Got it. The brother is dusty. You don't like dealing with him. What does she also admit it guys that you find dating rather difficult now? You've been on a few dates. Now it's an excuse. See, Corey Hardrick wasn't, you know, what I needed him to be. Now dating is hard for me because you know what? I needed date. I never dated before. I was only allowed to date at 18 years old. I never really dated. So now it's an excuse now. Okay, first, Corey Hardrick is not who I wanted him to be. Okay, fine, right? He's terrible. Now, I, I, I don't know how to date because of my life experience. So whenever there's a reason why you can't get what you're looking for, there's always an excuse. And the reason is Tia, stop blaming it on the fact that you can't date because Tia Maori with where you are in your life and where your mindset is. There are just not a lot of guys that are sitting around standing around saying, I, I, this is what I'm looking for. That's really what it's about. It's nothing about the fact that she's unattractive because she's very beautiful, but, but like the guy that you're looking for to you, like what, what guy says, you know what? This is what I'm looking for. And see what ladies fail to realize is that guys really look at how you treat your ex-husband. Guys look at that guys pay attention to that. So they've already seen that. Okay. So this is her mindset. She's probably not malleable to changing maybe at this stage in her life. So if, if I were to date her, it'd just be a situation ship. It's not gonna be nothing serious. This is why you're crying about love will find me one day. And you have all those ladies in the comment section that are saying, Oh yeah, it's going to find you as if they have the power to give you that. And the reality is, is that Tia Maori is sort of cringe. You know, this is life. You know, we are adults. When things don't happen for us as adults, men or women, we have to be accountable for why those things don't happen and stop making so many excuses. Stop blaming everybody else. But the only people that can be blamed is men. Men, you didn't do this. It's your fault. Okay. Own accountability. All right, fine. Women, you didn't do this. Well, you know, my dog ate my homework. Well, well, why can you get that? Well, you know, um, I, you know, my, I, I put my heart in the blender and, and uh, then the power went out. It's, it's, it's always something. It's always something other than what it should be. And this is why a lot of guys in the West are having many problems with this setup, because at what point do your actions count for why you're not where you want to be in a certain situation? Like you're a talented actor, sure enough. But if you can't make it in the relationship world, 
Stop blaming it on the fact that you had to help this poor guy get to somebody else. Or now you've never dated and you can't date again. Maybe it is just because, Tia, you just don't have what it takes to get what you're looking for. And that's completely okay. A lot of us want things that we just can't achieve in life. It's called being a human. And if we can't get it, we just didn't do enough. It sounds better to say that than to just keep blaming everybody else for what you couldn't do. But guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity John. I really appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe, hit the bell. We're out.